Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. Today we focus on the king of fiber, which is cotton. Economic slowdown and aggressive rate hikes amidst recession fears have hit demand for textiles given its discretionary nature. This in turn has cotton millers needing less cotton, which in addition to prolonged lockdowns in China has created a demand issue. An ever-rising supply in the face of this weaning demand has pushed prices to a one-year lows for this month. Moreover, the fears of continuing inflation in Europe and United Kingdom has the sector worried that the demand picture will remain muted. So what's in store for the sector going forward? Joining me now to take that discussion forward is William Bettendorf of the Cotton Council International and Mark Lukowitz is President and CEO of Suprema Cotton. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us. William, uh, what's your sense really on the global cotton trade right now? Because last year was a great one. We saw 11-year highs and all-time highs in case of cotton prices that actually got spilled over into this year as well. But now with this uncertainty, rising rate hikes and recession fears, how do you look at those numbers? My sense of the global cotton trade is, uh, hmm, that's a good question. You know, the cotton industry is always... Um, I guess we, we follow the trends and we try to anticipate the trends, but this year with, I guess, the reduced reduction in some of the key producing countries, like the states, namely, because the U.S. is the largest global supplier of cotton, you know, to the global markets, you know, the, the situation's tight, you know, and um, with the recent floods in Pakistan, even though our uh, government estimates are... Uh, I don't know if they, last month, if they took that into consideration, but I think next month we'll see that the global supply is going to be reduced quite a bit. As a result, that will put pressure on prices. So, you know, obviously we'll have to see what happens at the end of the day, but generally um, I think there's a, a tightening in global supply which will help to put pressure on prices. All right. Well, that's about supplies. And as you said, uh, you could be looking at an impact on prices because of that. What's your sense on the demand picking up? Because that also seems to be slightly tepid. Do you see improvement in that coming too? Yeah, demand, uh, from what intelligence we've been able to gather from the textile mills and the major textile producing nations, uh, the orders from the brands and retailers is... Uh, is reduced uh, for the coming say six to 12 months so I you know right now this year we're okay but when you look at demand for the next year uh, it appears to be from the intelligence that we've been able to collect will be down uh, quite a bit it's not going to be a disaster by any means but it will be lower and so we've heard uh, again from some of the mills and manufacturers that not only are they going to reduce their capacities, but actually in some cases we've heard that some mills have boasted that, that they've actually shut down facilities because that means they're not actually losing money. So, um, you know, I think we're, you know, generally we're approaching a down cycle, but the good news is it's a cycle and it'll, it'll come back again. Oh, well, yes. You know, William, shutting down capacities by millers is nothing. Uh, uh, it's not just a global phenomenon. We've seen pretty much that happen in the Indian markets as well, where SME, SMEs and uh, smaller mills actually have cut capacity. Some of that, uh, some of them actually have shut shop as well in the southern part of India. But Mark, getting you in the conversation as well, give us a sense on the global cotton supply and demand. I mean, what numbers are you working with? That's a difficult question to answer, Manisha. The issue with regards to global demand is really complicated through the COVID pandemic, uh, through the war with Russia uh, in Ukraine, uh, energy issues. There's a lot of competition for uh, land in terms of resources, not only for fiber production, but for food production, and even for energy production when you consider ethanol. Uh, the challenges in the marketplace uh, also impact the cost of living, so consumers are currently challenged, and then the logistics issues on top of that. Uh, for India, the weather patterns certainly have been erratic, but it appears that despite the challenges this year in India, that uh, you're going to have a big crop here in India, so that will be good for the domestic manufacturers that they have a good large domestic supply but there's still a, a definitive need for imports of premium quality cotton uh, for other demand characteristics for the marketplace, both again for the domestic consumption and for exports. So as we look at the current uh, global cotton position, uh, we can certainly see that globally cotton production will be down. 
the U.S. cotton production will only be estimated to be approximately 13 million bales this year on a, on a positive note. That's down a few million bales from traditional numbers, and that is a challenge in itself. Uh, from the Supima cotton side, we are uh, near one of the record lows in terms of our production. Uh, the challenges with water availability and uh, droughts around the world continue to impact uh, Supima cotton as well, as well as some of the Texas cottons in America. Uh, we've seen climate challenges in Pakistan with the massive floods, unfortunately, and the, and the disaster of the crop and, and the challenges there to the population, which are super unfortunate. And uh, I think we're going to see more of that going to the future. We don't see any abatement of those challenges, and I think that's just going to continue to provide a little bit more volatility for our markets. Mm. Well, yes, you rightly pointed out on the weather vagaries, and we have seen droughts and floods some places, and that has impacted the cotton crop across country and the world. William, but, uh, you know, the important factor clearly is going to be China because we've seen zero COVID policy there impact a lot of segments, sectors. Uh, China is also important when it comes to textiles and cotton. How do you see the Chinese factor playing out on this segment? Yeah, China is, is always a wild card. Um, the, the interesting thing with the United States is that China is uh, it's our biggest uh, importer of uh, American cotton as well. And we source the majority of our apparel from China. So it's, uh, it's an interesting relationship between the United States and China. In terms of what's going to happen in the future, as you said, it's a wild card. We don't know. But hopefully uh, through, I guess, continued discussion and communication, will be able to, uh, you know, to overcome things. And you had asked about, you know, the COVID situation uh, with their lockdown policy. It is incredibly strict. And uh, that, I think, definitely has had an impact on manufacturing. Uh, but, um, you know, we're also hearing that the, the Chinese stocks are quite high. You know, they buy cotton to fill their cotton reserve. But in terms of their textile production and exports, we're hearing that there's uh, some product coming onto the market that's quite um, priced quite uh, competitively. And so some of the, the global manufacturers are concerned about that because we, we may have you know, low priced Chinese yarns or fabrics coming into the markets that traditionally hadn't been here before. Mm -hmm. William, also, how do you see the space going forward then? Uh, how do you look at the prices? I mean, we've seen a very erratic year, this one. All-time highs to where we are trading right now is nearly 45 to 50 percent off from those kind of levels. Manisha, that is a, that is a great question. Um, how we see the future for um, the global industry, global textile industry, is uh, they're going to, mills and manufacturers are going to be under a lot of pressure. Uh, from especially their customers, the brands and the retailers, because it's not just about supplying a shirt or a, a pair of jeans, because now the, the brands and the retailers are looking at a bigger picture, which also includes, you know, are the products that they're supplying to the global consumers, are they made ethically, are they made in a sustainable way? And um, this will be a deciding factor of who's going to be a winner and who's going to be a loser. Mills and manufacturers all around the world, not only are they receiving, beginning to receive this message from their, their customers, but they're beginning to, it's, it's not really a request, it's more of a demand now. So it's a requirement. And in terms of the U.S. cotton industry, we feel we're perfectly poised to be able to meet that need because we have a product that's sustainable and it's made uh, in an ethical way. And even more importantly is that our supply chains are very transparent. So. We are optimistic about the future. We're optimistic about our partners here in India, and we look forward to continuing to partner with them and, and uh, you know, be a, pros uh, a partner for prosperity. And um, we, we've pretty, you know, we're optimistic. What else can I say? <laughs> All right, we get that. Mark, same thing to you. What is your outlook for cotton going forward in fourth quarter and for the rest of 2023? Because the season is just about beginning. How are you guys playing it or calculating those numbers? Yeah, certainly an interesting question. Uh, obviously, it's impossible to uh, entirely predict price. And, you know, we're not adept to do so. Uh, it is one of the market uh, considerations of the unknowns that we have to continuously deal with, including our supply chain. Uh, if you look at the current market conditions, 
there certainly continue to be lots of challenges with regards to supply, to inventory levels, uh, to shipping constraints, et cetera. Uh, now there's challenges with regards to uh, increasing market prices uh, across the entire spectrum, from the input materials that growers face to the manufacturing supply chains. So with the pressures in the marketplace, we probably see a bit of a softening. Uh, if you look at the US, the National Retail Federation is kind of forecasting the, second, the fourth quarter of the year to be down about 2%, but they're still forecasting uh, consumption and uh, total revenues to be up for the entire year, uh, with the initial projections still forecast at a $4.8 trillion consumption for the US, which would be a new record. So despite all the challenges, the economy in the U.S. has been uh, exceptionally strong. And globally, we continue to see uh, challenges as well. So it is going to be a, a bit of a, a challenging finish to the year, but we see forecasts uh, potentially into the new year, uh, possibly picking up a little bit and, and hopefully a little bit more stabilization with regards to global uh, challenges that we see currently. Mark, also, what's your sense on the cotton prices trajectory? I mean, uh, will we continue to see these volatile moves going forward too? It's a really good question about prices, Manisha. So let's talk about it pragmatically. If we think about prices for a fiber, under the current situation of costs being up for everything, uh, it's not only the costs that are up for the brands, the costs are up for the consumers. The costs are up for the manufacturers. That means energy costs are up, labor costs are up, operational costs are up, um, you know, material costs, chemical costs, uh, all of those costs are up. That applies to the fiber as well. It is almost impossible to envision that it's a fair assumption that somehow that cotton prices should be able to go lower considering the input prices that are up for all the growers. The growers are at the end of the supply chain with the most amount of pressure of all pricing ending up in their laps. So we have to renegotiate that conversation and not necessarily only think about uh, prices as a negative impact, but we have to be responsible to be able to support those growers so that, they can, so that they can be viable, that they can be sustainable, that they can continue to provide what we all as consumers ask for. So when it comes to prices, yes, it's a component of the supply chain. Uh, it's not reasonable to expect that somehow that the prices can substantially go lower from these levels because there's no capability for the growers to absorb those uh, decreases in value because it'll leave them in a negative position where the costs exceed the cost of production. Oh, very well said, Mark. Absolutely. This has been an year which has made it difficult for the mills as a raw material and the way the prices have declined, it's a difficult time for the producers now. We will try and uh, understand on what it really means for the Indian markets as well. William and Mark, thank you so much for joining us and giving us an international perspective for this. But after this break, we will talk about the Indian markets on how they have really seen the impact of this. We will chat with Prabhu Damodaran. He's head of Techpreneurs Federation after this break. Welcome back. You're watching Commodity Champions. We now turn our focus to the domestic cotton market and joining us for that is Prabhu Damodaran. He's head of Techpreneurs Federation. Mr. Damodaran, hi. Thank you so much for your time. We heard on what the international guests had to say on cotton, textile and the overall global industry there. What is your sense? Because it has been a difficult time for India as well with what the prices have done. What, first of all, how are you looking at the prices going forward? Uh, good afternoon. Actually, we witnessed uh, one of the uh, painful quarters uh, ending September, mm. both in terms of uh, utilization levels as well as uh, margin front. And as you know that the last cotton year, due to robust goods demand and abundant liquidity, artificially, we witnessed artificially elevated prices. You know, in, it's kind of a bullwhip effect. If we have 10% more demand, cotton can show a kind of a uh, bull run and now the reverse is happening. Mm. See, uh, normally uh, in the past, in many bull runs, we witnessed that many commodities used to settle down at 10% higher than the pre-bull run levels. Okay. That means now we are expecting 55,000 to 60,000 range of prices for Indian cotton. Mm. That may be the range for short term, ma'am. Mm. 
as you said, it has been a difficult time and this quarter clearly has seen the highs and the lows and uh, has been making records of all sense. But what about the demand really? Because we do understand that for the Indian markets or for the international markets, it isn't really a festive time for the textile as an industry because when you look at the domestic demand or the textile exports, both the numbers have been on the weaker side. See, actually the multiple reasons are playing out together this time. Particularly the developed markets like US, inventory readjustment is happening. Just for an example, during the peak of the crisis last year, China to US, it taken around 84 days of time for transit. Now they are getting in 40 days time. Mm. So it's very natural for uh, retailers to reduce the 40 days inventory in the system. And they are also facing lower consumer sentiment, higher level of inventory. So it is not the matter of demand contraction more of a inventory adjustment is happening in Europe, in US market. But in Europe, it is reverse. Really, we are witnessing demand contraction. Uh, it will take another two, three quarters for them to recover. And third, domestic market, robust sales are happening in retail. We are getting uh, updates from all the retailers uh, regarding the uh, good festival sales happening now. Only thing is, everyone knows in domestic, prices are going to correct cotton prices, everyone keeping 60, 65,000 in mind, mm. why should we purchase now? So they are all postponing the purchases. That is creating a vacuum. You know that in India, the whole textile fashion trade works from seven months to 11 months inventory period. During the bull market, due to expectation of increasing prices, retailers, everyone in the system used to build stock and take the inventory level to 11 months. Mm. And now the contraction times, People used to shrink their inventory. The whole system works on hand-to-mouth inventory to the tune of seven months. I'm talking about fiber to retail level. Okay. Various stages, everyone have their different level of inventory. Hmm. So in this correct, corrective, uh, like kind of a price correction, hmm. automatically people used to postpone this per, per their purchases. Right. So I think post Diwali, things will change because uh, after seeing robust sales in domestic market, people will come back for buying. At the same time, in, in terms of spinning mills, spinning mills are operating at very, very low utilization level, around 40 to 50 percent in many states. Some states are operating at 50 to 60 percent. This time, we are witnessing a very new trend. Pre-COVID period, irrespective of market, people used to run the mills and even make losses. Hmm. Now, everyone is working on profitability like uh, cash flow basis. If okay. the market is not doing well, they are reducing the utilization and they are adjusting the supply and demand in a very calibrated manner. Understood. So demand comes slowly, gradually, mills will step up. So that will keep a price check on cotton prices. Understood. So what you're saying is that in a month, we will see Indian demand pick up. And because of the readjustment that the international markets are looking at, it might perhaps take a couple of quarters or more. But tell us, when we are looking at demand right now, and as you said, the business, the way of doing business also seems to be changing. What kind of a demand growth is the industry looking for right now, for this quarter, for the next, uh, for 2023, the first calendar quarter there as well? Uh, the, the current quarter, we may not see the whatever the October to December quarter, we may not see a robust demand in any part of the world. Okay. Now, the demand destruction too, we need to move towards demand normalization. Hmm. One of our member yesterday told his US buyer indicated that they will move towards pre-COVID level of ordering in the first quarter of next uh, calendar year. So we are seeing some kind of a demand normalization coming back of calibrated buying from US, Middle East and Australian markets, as well as domestic market. Europe will take another one or two quarters because they are seeing first time historic inflation. They are all in shock every day. They are some kind of a turbulence happening in those markets. Mm. So it will take some more time for them to come back. Okay. Now, the very, very important factor in the, uh, in the overall scheme of things, long-term outlook is very good. See, it's a, now the in demand normalized world, it is a matter of who is gaining market share for, from the available business. US imports around 8 lakh, 8 lakh crore worth of apparels every year. We have around 6% share. China plus one opportunity is real. One of our member visited multiple buyers in the American market. He witnessed a very new trend. Many American buyers appointed exclusive sourcing professionals 
to keep uh, to develop alternate sourcing destinations rather than china so that trend is real only thing we need to build scale we need to invest in capabilities we need to build our competitiveness to grab the market share so textile will be a long term story it will take another for example yesterday apple some of the analyst mentioned if they want to take 10 to 20% uh, manufacturing out of china it take around 7 8 years the same story for textile also we are at 37 billion dollar exports uh, uh, china is with uh, 300 billion dollar so long way to go gradual steady shift will happen over a period of time i agree and raw material competitiveness also very very important to capitalize that opportunity i get that point yes i mean as you said from demand destruction to demand normalization is what we are trying to achieve this time around and then of course demand growth is something that we'll talk about but i take your point that you say that india perhaps will bounce back faster and then europe and then the rest of the developing world developed world is uh, where we will see demand for this coming back thank you so much mr damodaran for joining us and giving us that sense but with that it's time up on this edition of commodity champions thank you for watching